Shalom, shalom, y'all, sure Allah. I want to start off first things first. Give it all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Raha Kadash, which in the petty who be tongue, is great as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to your sister brothers laboring in this truth, and shalom to brothers and sisters that's listening and studying to show yourselves approved. Over here meditating the spirit, Yashrala. And one thing I noticed, the devils is getting ready to get active. They're getting ready to get busy. When I talk about devils, I'm talking about Esau Edom, the so-called white man. They're about to show the world that they are the devil in the flesh. Now, I got before you a lesson by my aunt, Kadar Shahan. We just did a lesson. We got a, a string of, of recent lynchings. And one just happened here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Like a couple of days ago, what they say off of um, Archer and Lewis, not too far we do our highway and hedges, you know, and um, Jake got strung up in a tree. They're trying to sweep it under the under the rug. It's not catching a lot of, of news like that. And me and my aunt was talking. We believe that the police did it. You know, we can't for say Shay who did it, but, you know, Jake does not hang themselves and uh and you know outside in public places that's just something we don't do so that jake got caught by a couple edomites and they did you know what they always did you know, they want to make america great again and america was great when they can pick a nigga and lynch him in the tree <coughs> and then you had another situation happen in north carolina where jake got lynched and i'm gonna play the clip on that i got and the people they're pretty mad about it, and that's not getting national news. It's only getting coverage on social media, you know, TikTok, YouTube, things of that nature, Facebook. But major news outlets are not covering these incidents because really, that's that's Esau doing what he do best, and that's unaliving the Jake and just being the dang devil. And then quick testimony, y'all, Charlotte. That's how I know things is heating up. And my job today, a uh, Edomite got fired. He got fired. And on his way out the door when he was getting walked out, he said that if Trump loses, he's going to come back up to the job in the building and he's going to kill every nigger in the building. You know, Jake ran up to my, my, my desk, all hysterical. The older Jake said that, all the Uncle Ruckuses. And they was telling me about it. And then when I found out who the Edomite was, it didn't surprise me. I'm like, oh, yeah, because I had an encounter with that Edomite. You know, it was like we was about to get at it. <coughs> So when they told me that, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, because he, he's one of those Confederate flag waving, uh, Trump loving. He got like a spider tattoo. He got tattoos on him to just let you know what he's about. That's why I look at Jake like I don't know why you even talked to that Edomite. But today he let them know how he feel and it shook them to the core. And they try to sweep that under the rug. And they try to say, like Jake told me that he said, you know, niggers. Esau tried to say he said Democrats, and then they didn't like they they're trying to sweep it under the rug, man. Then like it shook up the whole building. It had Esau walking on eggshells. They trying to say we ain't like that, and that's just him. And the women were scared. So they talking about beefing up security. But man, pretty much kind of sweep it, trying to clean it up. But it brought reality to a lot of Jakes that I work with in my buildings. I work with a lot of Coon Sambos. And they was all shook up, man. It's Jake's. They like in their 60s running me talking about what I'm going to do about it. I'm like, you already got fired. It's your scary butt. Like, you better go get your butt a farm, get ready. Because all of them in this building feel like that. And they're going to do that if Trump loses this election, if there is an election. They're going to do that if there is no election. If Trump does not get seated as president, these Edomites are going to go crazy. And Jake is now, I'm saying a Jake is not ready. A lot of these Jakes are not ready for that. Because they've been built up and told that we all won and we all breathe red blood and and, and Martin Luther King's dream and we all together not knowing that Esau Edom is your enemy. You know, you can read that in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, 83 and 5. Esau Edom, the white man, is your enemy. Lord, so I put enmity between y'all. So we're at the point now where Esau's tired of dealing with Jake. So they're running around in mobs and groups. 
And they catch you slacking and you don't know the Esau's your enemy and you over there trying to deal with them or going to their little, they little cookouts and going to the lake with them to fish, you're going to be swinging from a tree. And that's what Jakes has happened. That's that Hosea 4 and 6, a lack of knowledge. Because yeah, I don't feel no type of way about these Jakes. I'm like, you should know, man, by now. Apostle Elder's brother been putting out many a lessons. I mean, Esau done showed you he don't love you. What more you need to see? Police handle Jake harshly. And all these lynchings is a precursor to what's about to come. Esau's about to go back to that 1700 spirit. He see a Jake and a mob, they're going to grab him and string him up. So let's check out this clip from my ox lesson that he did. And peep it out. He, he went in details on what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, he reads an article on that. That Jake got hung. They trying to sweep it under the rug. Because you live up under Esau Edom, man. You live up under so-called white man. And he wants to, he wants you to be docile. So he wants to tell you there's nothing to worry about. You're safe. You know what you could say about peace and safety. You safe. We all good. But, you know, us in this truth know better, man. And these devils is turning up. Jake's is swinging from trees again. So let's play this clip. And Eve going to talk about it. to make this kind of post on my TikTok, but my family desperately needs your help. Um, this is my little cousin, Javion McGee. He's from Chicago, Illinois. He was 21 years old and would have been 22 in a few weeks. Um, he was found hanging from a tree in Henderson, North Carolina yesterday. Um, he drove trucks, so that was his reason for even being out there. The police officers are trying to say that he went to Walmart and purchased the rope and hung himself. We obviously don't believe that, and we are just asking for your help to push your story out there. There's no, there's, this isn't covered on any local platforms. No news stations, radio, none of that. So we're trying to push it out there. We really need your help. The um, police officers in the corner of the coroner's office are giving us a hard time, um, not allowing his mom to identify the body. Um, at one point, they told her um, she can't identify the body due to COVID. And then the next day, today, they told her um, the father has to give her permission for that, which he said that he would. She asked if they could send her pictures, at least. They told her yes, and then turned around and told her, oh, I don't think that you want to see your son like that. Come on. Like, this is just... This, this is just very devastating for my family, and we really, 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 really need to push this story out there. You see, so we're, we're living in a times where the racial tension is at an all-time high, and the scriptures said that this would happen, man. So, Like I said, we're at that point. Racial tension is at an all-time high, and it's going to boil over during this presidency election. It's going to boil over at that point. These devils is ready to shed the blood of Jake. You know, I just heard Edomite, he, they said he was hollering that on his way out the door because multiple people heard him in the back of the building. Then this Jake done got strung up. You know, young dude probably didn't know what's up. Didn't know he a Hebrew Israelite. He in a sundown town probably. I don't know about, too much about Henderson, North Carolina, but he, Jake is out here not knowing what's up. And when you don't know who your enemies are, know what's going on, you're a prey. You susceptible to what's going to happen, you know, but hey, we, we know what's up. We're looking to avoid this devil, you know, and I say be circumspect like me and my job. I'm going to be more circumspect. Oh, schools are getting more uh, shooting threats. The high school that I know of got a shooting threat. And it's this place is about to be all war, man. Civil war is about to break out, you know, so let's get to our first scripture. And I highly recommend y'all go watch that lesson, man. Uh, real good and edifying. And I'm going to go to see King David had it. Check out what King David said on uh, Psalms 140 and 1. It says, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Who's the evil man? Esau, so-called white man. He's evil. Preserve me from the violent man. That's, what, that's how Esau get down. He handles stuff by violence. He sees something you want, he take it. By violence. They're wicked. They have no love in them. And I'm going to show you a clip that's going to really, really show that Esau Edom is what this precepts say. In verse 2, which imagine missions in their heart continue they gather together for war. Esau about to declare war on the nation of Israel. 
all the Israelites here that's here, if you don't know what's going on, you better be in your war stance, man. Spirit prepare for war. Because it's about to get physical. And all these devils, they're trying to imagine, you know, the best way to get at us, man. They're trying to, you know, um, get a control group. They're trying to see which group is going to be, you know, militant, put up a fight. Which group can out, uh, jump on real easy. Neji Devils is talking about it in their conference rooms right now. What's the best way to take out the children of Israel? They always talked about that. And now they're tired of waiting. And the working class Edomites are like, man, we're going to be taking it in our own hands. Let's just string them up like we did back in the day. Uh, you know, uh, coming with the knives, the guns. Esau's ready for violence. He's the violent man. Perverse, wicked, evil. All of that. You know, that's Esau Edom. And I'm going to show you another clip to just really show you how wicked these devils are. Showing you that they're devil in the flesh. And you got to really watch your children and keep an eye on, you know, because we into them evil times. But check out what this devil did. When I seen this clip, man, it just made my blood boil, man. I'm not, that's what I'm ready to get at Esau. They are a cancer to me. And they need to be taken out because our, our, we not safe. The babies ain't safe. Nobody's safe in the valley of death, man. Babylon, the great America. So check out this clip right here. Look at what this devil did. And they they mostly are all with Salaki. They all are like that. There's some hide it better than others. So check this out. <laughs> She was a baby, and, and um, this man violated her in a way that, that um, people shouldn't have to think about. A sentencing in a horrifying case in Rensselaer County. A man learns his fate for committing an awful crime, raping and killing a three-year-old girl. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Sabrina Dami. And good evening. I'm Mark Mulholland. Prosecutors say the community should know what Robert Fisher did last year when he killed three-year-old Josephina Cunningham. The details are just awful. And new at 6, Kumi Tucker spoke with the little girl's brother, only on 13. She joins us live right now from Troy. Kumi, good evening to you. Good evening, Sabrina and Mark, and here at the Rensselaer County Courthouse. It was very difficult to sit in this courtroom today and listen to these horrifying details, and we want to warn you, the details are very upsetting. And many first responders were here. They packed the courtroom today in honor of that little girl. Josephina Cunningham had a sweet smile. She was just three years old when her life was taken from her in a horrifying attack. Robert Fisher admitted to raping and killing Josie in her home on Broadway in Rensselaer in July 2023. You are a threat to society. You show no remorse for what you did to Josie. He was a friend of her mother. He drugged her, went into her bedroom, and raped her while she was alive and awake. And these actions killed her. Her body went through such a traumatic response. Her body shut down because it could not sustain the trauma of the rape. He tried to cover it up, scrubbing her face so hard with Clorox wipes, he burned the pigment off her face. He even put Clorox wipes inside her. A deeper look at the house yielded that there was bloody baby shark's sheets in Josie's room, the defendant's bloody underwear, countless bloody towels. He said almost nothing in court. I want everybody to know what Mr. Fisher did on that night. And... Um, when our initial responders showed up to the scene and they made contact with Josephina, uh, they described her as being laid in bed on her back with her hands folded across her torso as if she was staged. But the significant bruising on her hips, inner thighs, and buttocks told a different story. Fisher was sentenced to 20 years to life behind bars. We felt the plea was necessary because we needed to know what happened. And in order to um, have Mr. Fisher allocute, we offered him 20 to life. Josie's brother says this case deserves the death penalty. People that, you know, that are innocent and, and getting killed like this and murdered like this, they can get death penalty. People that commit these crimes get death penalty. And the official cause of death was homicidal violence during a sexual assault with acute hemorrhage and lacerations, plus acute intoxication from the drugs. And prosecutors and police want people to know exactly what Robert Fisher did and to remember that and also to remember little Josie. Reporting live in Troy, Kumi Tucker, News Channel 13. Mark and Sabrina, back to you. Kumi, thank you.
So you see that what this devil did to this little Eve baby? He saw the devil. What what possessed you to do something like that? Why? You got all these hoes walking around Babylon the Great. You give him as little as five dollars and get get off, you know. But he had to do that to a little three year old Jake. So <coughs> there's no telling what she did in a previous lifetime to get such a gruesome judgment. But nonetheless, it shows you cannot trust Esau around your children. They say a friend of her mother. You was a friend of this old stupid, wicked devil. Show you the Eve is as dumb as all outdoors. You know, the majority of your Eves. And this is what this devil did. Drugged the little three-year-old and ravished her to death. This has to be, see, that's why Esau got to go, man. He's a cancer, you know. And then he only get 20 years to life. Like people say, that should have been easy death penalty easy my pops got more time for that for stealing <clears throat> we showed you the whole corrupt system has to come down esau just gotta go this whole system gotta go and uh the, the good thing war is gonna take them out of power you know and they're gonna start it you know lord willing we gonna finish it these devils gotta go i just want to show you that because i'm like i like somebody put in the comment a demon that's what Esau, you mean, he's a devil. I would never trust Esau around or with my children. Because it's just, when I, when I see them, just look at them in their eyes, I just see emptiness, and I, I just like, man, I really see the devil in the flesh. And when I look at them, when I'm in my job, and I look at them deep in their eyes, and it's like, you can tell there's no love, no compassion. They're totally carnal people. Like, we truly do have different spirits. And it's time to avoid them. But a lot of Jake's going to lose their lives because they, they best friends is the Edomite. And if you're close, they say, I seen Jake clicking up with Esau today after that was told at work. Jake was there pleading with Esau, you going to protect me? I'm looking like, man, you about to be one of the first ones to go. When Jacob's troubles really pop off, when the Civil War pop off, you're going to be, you going to go. Jake was over there pleading to Esau. That's why two thirds are gonna go, man. But for us, hey, as much as you can, avoid Esau. I know we got to deal with them in our, you know, business, work lives, or if you're going to school, whatever, you know, your outside life. But in your personal life, you shouldn't be dealing with no Edomite. I don't even like hearing their voice. Them talking irritates me. I can't talk to Edomite too long, and I never trust. Let's good to say. Let's go get that. Wasn't going to pull it, but, man, it's, it's classic, and it fits. Because a lot of Jake's going to lose their lives because they put their trust in Esau. Esau is their friend. You know, they like Esau. And scriptures told us in Ecclesiastes, or Sirach 12 and 10, never trust thy enemy, for like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. And I love that analogy the Lord used right there. Because you get a, a good piece of iron, you know, it look all shiny and good, but you let some, the rain get on it and put in some wetness, it's going to start rusting up. So Esau's wickedness don't show at first. But if you stick around long enough, pay attention, that rust, it, it's going to show. It's going to show. Me, I don't need any more convincing. I already know who Esau is, how he get down. I've had lots of bad, my worst run-ins in life have always been dealing with Edomites. You know, I went to uh, prominent schools. Where Esau stole the schools, and I didn't get along with Edomites, man, at, at all. I never hung around them like that. I can't. When I turned 26, I tell, I told myself, man, they done to me. I said that before I even got in the truth. So when I got in the truth, it, it just resonated like, oh, okay, that's why I have problems with Edomites. But I had gotten a situation with Edomite, and I said, you know what? Never again will I be cool with Edomite ever again, because they just, they always gonna snake you. They are the snake. You know, and that's why everything, man, the truth hit me. It just like made everything make sense. Like, OK, that's why I went through this in life. That's why I couldn't get along with them. Like it just it just showed me. And now we're at a point now in prophecy where these devils is about to get down like the 1700s. They're going to come in a big mobs. And this time they ain't going to have like swords and pitchforks. They're going to have guns, AR-15s, uh, AK-47s, Dirty Harry's. And they're going to be looking to unalive Jake's at this time. That's what Esau ain't going to be doing. So we got to stay prayed up, staying this truth. And Lord willing, you know, the Lord, 
Let's just get some get back on them devils. And this precept right here gonna sum it up perfect. I can't say it no more perfect than this. This is Psalms 18 and 46. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. And let Yahweh my salvation be exalted. Who's our rock? Yahweh Shah. Verse 47. It is Yahweh that avengeth me and subdued the people under me. Ooh, we, we patiently waiting on that. Esau needs to be under our feet. He needs to be ruled. He needs to be watched and, and dealt with harshly, you know, because they Esau, he's just too much. Verse 48, he delivereth me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifts up me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. And woo, we are patiently waiting on this prophecy to be fulfilled. We, we must be delivered from our enemies. Ain't no reconciling Esau eating with so-called white man. Ain't no reconcile with them. Fuck what Martin Luther King had to say. That that was a lie. He 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 was compromised. That's Cointel Pro. Forget that dude. Forget trying to be cool with Esau. No. We need to be delivered from our enemies. Esau, you know, so called white man, is your enemy. If you are a so called African American, so called Native American, and so called Hispanic, that white man is your enemy. He was your enemy then, he's your enemy now. And we need to be delivered from them. We're in their system. That's why we have such a hard time. That's why everything is all messed up. Everything is wicked. Because we're up under this dang devil. So if you're in your right mind, you should be praying to Yahweh Bashiach to deliver us from them. We need to be back in rulership, man. So the world can heal. So we can heal. So everything can heal. And the only person to get rid of this devil is Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. They set this devil up in power. They have to take him out. Now we're just praying that we get used as instruments to show this devil that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai liveth. You know, I want my biggest prayer. Matter of fact, I'm going to end up on that because I want to be a battle axe. Very, very bad. I cannot stand Esau Edom at all. This devil is overdue. So check it out. Jeremiah 51 and 20. There are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And woo, I'm so ready to do that. You know, we patiently wait. We need the spiritual power. You know, the scripture say, I ain't nothing but a worm right now. I can't do nothing to Esau and his systems. But the Lord say, I will renew your strength and give you men of Israel power. And with that power, man, we're going to hey, show Esau, Edom, who really run it. So this patient, patience, Akim, you know, we're going to get our time. Let's stay locked on this truth. Let's stay prayed up. And Lord willing, we get that power, man. We get protected from the hour of temptation. We get protected from Esau Edom. Because war is about to break out. Point blank period. War is about to break out. These devils is about to get busy. The frustration is mounting on the working class Edomites. E Esau period is angry. Because they're losing. But we, we shouldn't be scared or wary. Because we're part of the whole free leg, man. Ain't nothing this devil can do to us, man. We will receive the kingdom of heaven. I, I want to get busy on these devils, what I want to do. I want to be that, that Jeremiah 51 and 20, <laughs> you know. Because I want to do, what's that, Numbers 33 and 35? Matter of fact, let's go get that. Let's go get that. And I guess we'll leave off with that. Will the spirit be working? I wanted to leave with that, but then something else hit me. I want to make sure I got this right. Is it 35 or 33 or 33 and 35? Okay, it's 35 and 33. Okay, that's how it is. Then just check out what this says. It says, so ye should not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood. It defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. And who shed our people's blood? So by that scripture, what that mean I got to do? That I'm so ready to do it. 
And we, we you know, we're going to stay prayed up. And Lord willing, we get those positions. Because that, that's a job I want to do. Because I got a lot of built up um, anger and frustration living in this devil system, man. Because I done seen all the atrocities, the injustices. And we, we can't keep going on like this. We need Yahweh Bashi Shah. We need to be delivered. And uh, who going to set it off? Esau Edom, man. He going to start it. We going to finish it. So with that being said, I hope this is edifying. I want to say Kwam, Yashur Allah. And stay locked in because Yahweh Shah is quickly on the way. Shalom.